last year, I got so inspired and fired up that I decided to finally try MMA. I had been wanting to do it for some time, but for one reason or the other, fear, fear and, laziness, and laziness, I had not gone through with it. I always found martial arts incredibly badass. Action movies made sure every millennial and Gen Z boy did so as well. But it wasn't until I discovered the UFC that I realized, holy hell, this really exists. That connection to the real world made me appreciate martial arts even more. When I was in high school, I got in a fight with some kid and lost. So immediately I went back home and I thought, I gotta fix this. I can't be going around being so vulnerable. I was ashamed and frustrated. That fight had opened my eyes because I walked into it thinking, okay, I did karate when I was a kid, so that should help me somehow. And it didn't. So I began a thorough and well-sourced investigation on how to properly engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And eventually, I just got lost in the millions of fighting videos of YouTube until I came across this. His moves were so smooth and fluid, he was so pleasing to watch fight that I couldn't help but laugh whenever I'd see one of his matches, because he looked so ridiculously calm for such a chaotic situation. Going back to reality, I thought, I gotta try this, and fast forward a few years later, I finally did it. And so, what have I learned so far? What did we learn, Palmer? What did I discover that I think is so cool that you would also benefit from it? Let's see. The reasons go beyond the realm of physical confrontation. I have found they made me better in other areas as well. Let's start from the fact that, for many of us, fighting implies facing fear. At practice, we would either exercise, hit the pads, or do some sparring. And even though the latter was what I looked forward to the most, it was also the one that scared me the most. Am I nervous? Yes. My sensei was quite forgiven with beginners in every sparring session, but he'd also make us understand the inevitable danger involved in combat. Therefore, every time I heard phrases like, today we will be sparring, or get your gloves and your mouthpiece, my heart would start racing my hands shaking and my mood would instantly switch. I do my best to hide all of that because you don't want to appear like the only coward in the room. This is fine. And I go and face my fear head on. I began to take every sparring session as an opportunity to work on the way I deal with fear. During that time, I also heard an interesting insight from Jack Willink or Andrew Huberman. I don't know, I tend to mix them up. I didn't find the clip, but it was something along the lines of when you feel nervous before a fight and you feel your stomach trembling with fear, what that means is that your body is taking blood from all the organs in your stomach and transferring it to your arms and legs because you're about to need those to be fully charged up for your upcoming fight. And that rationalization totally changed the way I perceive this anxiety. Now it's not even fear, it's hype. Now when all of my body is trembling, whether it's because I'm about to have a sparring session or because I'm just going to do something that scares me, that fear turns into excitement. And that is how fighting taught me to deal with fear. I also inevitably extrapolate this to every other challenging situation I come across. I now welcome them as an opportunity to prove myself, so to speak. Realizing what's important. Oftentimes in training, I was put through levels of physical stress that made me ask, wait, why the fuck am I doing this again? Like the first time I did shin conditioning. I remember the pain was so excruciating that I thought, this is ridiculous, how the hell do you expect me to endure this? My shin feels like it's about to snap in half any time now. In fact, I couldn't stop swearing through the whole thing, but I got through it. And I promised myself that next time, I'd just bear it in silence. And guess what? I did. I realized that the uncertainty of the process is what made it impossible for me to endure the pain. But once I understood that, number one, it was temporary, and number two, that my sensei would never hit me so hard that he'd break my leg, then the rest became easier. I had to gather the strength to bear all that pain, and I noticed that in order to do that, I had to clear my head of any distracting, useless thoughts, so that I could concentrate. The worse the pain got, the more I eliminated ideas that weren't important or urgent. So naturally, by the end of it, only important and urgent issues would remain in my head. Therefore, during that small window of time, I would realize what really matters to me. 
my goals, the people I love, whatever was left in my mind at the end of that session was precisely what was essential to my life. So before you decide to go on a trip to Peru or India to discover yourself and what you really are or want, do consider stopping by an MMA gym and have the coach put you through some intense spiritual awakening session. Also, after I understood how crucial pain tolerance was for an MMA fighter, my respect for professional fighters increased exponentially. Because I'm just a regular civilian and I can barely take this, so I can only imagine the level of hell this man had to endure to even get to participate in tournaments like the UFC, 1FC, Bellator. Check it yourself. After some months of training, I was getting very proud of my progress. It was fair to say that I could defend myself from people my size or slightly bigger who didn't have martial arts training, which comes in handy and it certainly makes you feel more comfortable wherever you go and somewhat nervous whenever you see someone with these. I went down this rabbit hole of fake scenarios in my head where I would evaluate my odds against random opponents in the street. Maybe this guy I could take, maybe this one I could not, always from a realistic point of view. What happened to him? It died. But if I went too many days without sparring, the scenarios would get crazier and crazier, and I'd end up pulling a 1v5 like it was nothing. Basically, it would give me a level of self-confidence I didn't earn. And when I would spar again, I would do it thinking, fuck yeah, I'm the baddest, this shit's easy. And next thing I know... So again, fighting would work as a mechanism to bring me back to reality, to show me what I could and could not yet do by that time to wipe out any ounce of delusion in my mind, which is very useful when you strive to live your life based on reality. And another way martial arts keep you in check is when you, like any other flawed human, start to abuse your newly acquired skills. I'm talking about when we spar the new guy and we don't hold back, or when we raise our voice to those we shouldn't. Whether we do this consciously or unconsciously, we're displaying an attitude that's not desirable in the least and certainly not honorable. But once again, that behavior is quickly dismantled by a good rough spar or by some life-draining exercise. You name it. Okay, so that's it off the top of my head, the three main reasons why fighting can improve your life and make you a better person. If you still don't think it would, I mean, that's perfectly respectable. Not everybody has cut out to be a warrior or even strive to become one. And I'm not even saying this to make you feel inferior. In fact, you could say that, to some people, physical confrontation would just get in the way of achieving their goals. For example, I surely don't expect Elon to watch this video and go, screw Mars, let's do MMA. Go yourself. But for normies like you and me, trust me, in this day and age, it can only make, make us, us stronger. stronger.